So before we get to the Elon Musk topic, I'm going to discuss two citizenships that one could have obtained at $100, which is 100 US dollars, and you heard that right. And then I'm also going to discuss a third citizenship that most of you may never even have ever heard about at $10,000. These are not fake passports. These are real passports. And towards the end, I have a very special topic. It's an open appeal to Elon Musk. And this is not only intended to help him, but also immensely help the citizenship and residency by investment community. And this is where I need my subscribers and my viewers to participate in this process. But before we get to all of this exciting stuff, if you're new, my name is Jay, and here we discuss investments that lead to residency and plan B citizenships. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, take a moment and subscribe so you're always up to date on the latest and greatest regarding any of the programs. Before I get started, a quick disclaimer, this is not immigration, investment, legal, tax or financial advice. This is educational and entertainment content. All right, let's get right into it. So the first citizenship that one could have obtained at $100 is the car, which is the Central African Republic. They just had a draw last month where if one put in $100 towards the cryptocurrency, meaning you're not donating the $100, you're purchasing $100 worth of Sangha coin. And if you won this prize, you would have gotten a chance to win one of the 10 citizenships that they awarded. So they awarded the equivalent cost of a citizenship, which is $60,000. And once they start distributing the citizenships or the passports, this prize money could have been redeemed. Now, this is a perfectly legal, legitimate country, the Central African Republic that ran this program, perfectly legal program. The next two citizenships that I'm going to discuss about are related to what I would discuss regarding Elon Musk. The first of which is the Free Republic of Verdes. Now, what is the Free Republic of Verdes? Where is it? How was this formed? And what is the citizenship really? Now, to explain this, let me draw your attention to the citizenship of Liberland. If you take a look at the Wikipedia article on Liberland, this country is officially called as the Free Republic of Liberland. It's a micronation. And this was an unclaimed piece of land on the western part of the river between Croatia and Serbia. So long story short, there's a lot of disputed land between Croatia and Serbia. They're known for playing football with some of these territories where none of these countries seem to claim this piece of land. And that gave the opportunity to one of this political activist from Czech by the name of Vit Jetka. So he took the opportunity, he founded this country, he founded this citizenship, and they actually have a government website. And now if you go on their website and you look at the map where this is located, as you can see, it's located right between Croatia and Serbia. It's that piece of land which is now claimed to be Liberland. Now, obviously, this is an unclaimed piece of land, or you can say this is a disputed piece of land. Both Serbia and Croatia would obviously have dispute with anyone claiming access to their territory. They have recently tried to block access to people entering this region, right? Because it is disputed. Nonetheless, in technicality, someone has claimed access to this. There's a country that has been formed and there are passports and citizenships that have been issued by Liberland. Now, similar to Liberland, there's the Free Republic of Verdes, founded by an Australian by the name of Daniel Jackson. Our concept is really similar. He found one of the territories that was disputed or unclaimed. It's called Pocket 3 and he laid claim to Pocket 3. He said he was the founder. He followed some principle, followed some guidelines, established a country, created a passport and started selling passports. Now, if you the funny thing is, if you look at their government website, they do have a government website. And if you load the website, it looks so clunky that it actually resembles a real government website. But if you look at their website, they have all the op the typical options that any CBI country offers, which is citizenship, e-residency, etc. Their citizenship itself costs $16 as per the website and the passport is another $80. So at $96, one can be a citizen of the Republic of Verdes. I do not recommend this type of citizenship. Obviously, this is entertainment content only. Now, the other citizenship, the Liverland, is $10,000. That's what he claims. That's what it was. I don't know if the costs have gone up, but that's what he claims. Now, the reason why I am discussing these last two citizenships is to draw your attention to how a country is formed 
how a territory can be unclaimed. Someone can lay claim to a territory, uh, create a government, and then start issuing a citizenship and passport. Now, there's a four-step process in creating a country or claiming a nation. And if you look at the foreign policy website, it lists the four steps as making sure you're eligible, meaning it should be a sovereign state, it should be unclaimed, whatever the requirement is to make sure that at least no one has, it's not an, a country already. The second step is obviously declare independence, right? You gotta be independent. You shouldn't be, someone shouldn't be ruling you, of course. Now, if you're starting a brand new country, there's no question of anyone ruling you. It's a disputed or an unclaimed territory. You're going laying claim. So you declare independence. Third is get recognition. Obviously, no one recognizes these countries. So although the passport is legal, it's not fake. A fake passport is a replica or a duplicate passport that claims to be the original one. Here, this is not trying to claim to be an original passport. This itself is a real passport of this country that they claim to be theirs. It's a very different story. Now, this is not recognized, right? The countries don't recognize any such country. So that is wherein the passport doesn't have any access. So you cannot actually use this passport to travel anywhere. This is kind of for fun purposes if one wants to get citizenship. But the point being, if someone recognizes you, right? So you're friends with a certain country and the country decides to recognize your passport, this kind of stuff happens all the time. They can give you access to their territory. Then that passport becomes legitimate because now it has at least partial recognition. And then you can get residency and whatnot. Not with this passport, but I'm trying to explain the concept. And then finally, you join some clubs, right? You join the NATO, you join the BRICS, you join some form of organization which adds more substance, which adds more recognition to forming a country. So what does a country need to start selling passports? For example, let's say you are a tiny island nation and you decide to start selling passports. You need the government, you need the land, you need the people, and then you want the buyers. Then you start selling your passports. A lot of Caribbean countries, at least five of them, sell their passports. When you purchase this passport, you're giving them cash, which is a donation. They give you the passport. There's a clear, straightforward, paper to paper transaction. In a lot of cases, people actually don't need to travel to these countries. Yes, you can travel if you choose to, but a lot of people actually never even visit this country. That is how straightforward it is. Once you are a nation, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Now, what is the connection with Elon Musk? What is this appeal all about? Now, Elon Musk has two very important initiatives that he has been working on. One of it is creating a space vessel that orbits around the moon. His idea is to start some form of tourism where he can have people pay for this uh, access and then they can tour the moon. The other famous call out was establishing a city on Mars. Now that may seem a little over ambitious. Now let's say he gets close to the moon. Now how difficult is it for someone like an Elon Musk to lodge an e-government? Now once he establishes some form of a government, as long as there is a potential or possibility for people to land, right? And then he follows this four step process that's involved in forming a country, which is you declare independence, you declare eligibility, you use your muscle power. Let's say you partner with some of the Caribbean nations or you partner with something like an El Salvador or futuristic nations who are in desperate need of cash they may want to partner with you. They may give these citizens access to their territory. Once a passport is issued to citizens of the free republic, I expect at least a dozen nations to be very excited to partner with someone like an Elon Musk on something like this. Once they give you access, you have partial access on this passport. This passport suddenly becomes very valuable and then you can establish residency. Some of the hurdles that this absolutely does not face is any dispute or any claim because obviously planets are not disputed whoever makes the first move and I don't think there's anyone in competition with Elon Musk at least at this time to think and create something like this. The other problem that such an independent passport solves is that it removes you from the jurisdiction of the earth. You are completely independent, governed by e-rules and regulations, which can have their own set of freedoms. You could be a free citizen without any restrictions that different countries impose upon you. The citizen can completely detach himself or herself from the influence of the earth. Taxation can take its own route. And there's so many other several benefits that can be designed with this form of an e-establishment. Obviously, you should have the ability to travel back and forth with all the different technologies and innovations that he is creating. It's quite possible that at least in theory that he can transport people back and forth if the need be. 
with all his initiatives, if this can get some serious traction, this can be included. A lot of people will be interested in all of what he is doing if this is accommodated. There's a big incentive for investing because if you are going to be a citizen of what you are investing in, this is going to add more funding to him. And this is also at large going to benefit a lot of people that have been affected by draconian governmental rules and regulations that they're suffering so they can easily change their citizenship. They can obtain this new nationality and they can reap the benefits of all of what this can offer. Now, here is where my subs and my viewers come into play. Now, I'm trying my level best to reach out and appeal to Elon Musk. I want my subs and my viewers in case any of you have any direct way of getting Elon's attention to this matter, try your best to spread the news, get through to him and get him interested in this subject. So while we await our dual citizenship from Mars and Moons, in the meanwhile, if you're looking to establish any residency or citizenship on planet Earth, click the link in the description, book a call with us. We can discuss what you're looking for and get you started. I hope you liked this video. Until next time, you take care and goodbye.